What's going on guys? Welcome to your 22nd tutorial and in this lesson we're going to be talking more about CSS3 properties and what I did is I deleted all those gradients and um, text shadows and I basically just have this plain old box with some text in it no effects whatsoever and that's where we're going to be starting. Now the very first thing I want to talk to you guys about is something that I don't even like but I need to tell you guys about it or else you know they're gonna say that you skipped over something it's called the outline now the outline is pretty much the thing around your border and let me just make a really obvious one I'll put like seven pixels solid uh, red it has all the same properties of your border it's just like an additional border basically so the reason I don't like it is because whenever you're trying to uh, kind of like lay everything out you already have to consider the element itself the padding the margin the border in the overall width of the element and then if you add in the outline it's just too many things to keep track of so even though you can add some pretty nice looking outlines I don't recommend doing it because whenever you work with the width and laying out your website it just gets too much but for this tutorial I'll keep it in there so now that I went over the outline I want to talk to you guys about some cool transformations now a transformation typically in a lot of computer programs you can scale rotate um, stretch things out and with CSS3 it's no different you can go ahead and add the property transform and depending on what value you add this pretty much is saying how do you want to transform the element now since we added the property in this box whatever we do it's going to transform this yellow blue and red box right here so say we wanted to let me go ahead and show you guys a simple one say we wanted to scale the element and scale means either shrink or grow it we're gonna by default it's one anything smaller is gonna make it smaller anything bigger is gonna expand it so if we add a 1.5 it's gonna be 1.5 times the normal size so check it out big old mumbo jumbo scale now you can also have an X and a Y for example if you have something like one uh, three what it's gonna do is it's gonna scale along the X value left and right keep that the same by default it's one and the three is gonna stretch it along the Y if I'm correct so now it's stretched out vertically but the same width horizontally and another cool trick you can do is if you had negative one to one right like that your text becomes Russian how awesome is that so anyways let's go ahead and get rid of that scale and talk about some other transformations um, another one is rotate and if you add 45 in there the parameter rotate takes is the degrees and I think I talked to you guys about degrees oh yeah whenever we were talking about gradients you could use the degrees too and a lot of people were like okay what I use for degrees is actually DEG so I got rid of the scale and if you see rotate 45 there you go and I think you can have a negative value but that just changes the other way it rotates but you don't really need that because it's kind of like if you rotate something 180 degrees or negative 180 then it turns out being the same thing so now let me go ahead and get rid of this rotate and I want to talk to you guys about skew now I'm gonna ask you this before I even show you this please please do not ever use what I'm about to teach you so let's go ahead and refresh this and check it out I can't think possibly when you would ever want this even if you're making like well I'll talk to you guys about like dynamic effects later but even if you were just using this in effect and this wasn't your end result it looks stupid anyway so I have to go over it you know because I want to teach you guys all the nitty gritty stuff but please do not ever use skew I think it looks ugly and uh, I will never go to your website if you do so anyways now that we covered that <laughs> I want to talk to you guys about the last one and that's translate now whenever you translate something it basically means just move it so unless you're talking you know in everyday life that means changing one language into another language but anyways in this sense in CSS3 it means just moving something now in order to move something we could either give it one value but I typically give it pass it two values imagine this is a grid for math class your X and Y is left and right in or excuse me your X is left and right and your Y is up and down whenever you give it two positive values it's gonna move it to the right and down so 150 pixels 300 pixels I don't even know if that's going to show up on my screen but what we were pretty much doing as you can see in the bottom right is we moved it right and down so that's pretty much means the X value and the Y value that you want to move it by now if you would give it negative values it would either move it up or to the left so just imagine you know whenever you did 
whenever you're graphing quad quadratic equations in school, up and left are negative, right and down are positive. So that's nice. And the last thing I want to talk about is this. If you want to apply multiple effects on the same box, you need to write them all on one line. You can't have four different WebKit transform properties spaced one under each other. So for example, if you had this awesome box like this one right here and you wanted to, you know, maybe translate it translate it, let's see, we'll move it 100 pixels down and 100 pixels right. Actually, it's uh, right down. But anyways, uh, we wanted to translate and then we wanted to rotate it 30 degrees and the last thing we want to do is scale it by 0.8. Now anything under one is going to shrink it a little bit because one is the standard. We need to apply them all on the same transform line. So now if I go ahead and save this as long as I didn't type anything wrong, as you can see it moved it to the right and down, rotated it by 30 degrees and shrunk it a little bit. Kind of unnoticeable but trust me it shrunk. So that is all I have to talk to you guys about for this tutorial and if you're saying okay I know what you guys are saying right now. This stuff is all stupid because if I wanted something smaller, I would just, you know, make the width smaller. If I wanted something moved to a different location, I would just, you know, maybe change the margins or something. So when the heck would I ever even use this crap? Well, you actually use it more often, not in the original layout, but sometimes for awesome text effects for example if you wanted um, to hover over something and it would rotate or translate or scale then your website could do that without using flash or JavaScript or anything so that kinda gets into a, a little more deep technique but we'll be talking about that later on so that's the usefulness of this and uh, so there you go that's all I'm gonna ramble on for this tutorial but anyways thank you guys for watching don't forget to subscribe and uh, yeah I'll see you later